Bill Marley, son of Bob Marley, grandson of Bob Marley. But they're not about music right now. They're about <laughs> football, right, guys? Right. So exactly. we'll, we'll talk with you first. Sure. Talk to us about why you went into sports as opposed to music. Well, when I was growing up, I was always a lover of um, original football. Not uh, foot, really, you know, we play with our feet <laughs> in Jamaica. And when I came to America, my type of football wasn't as big, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I was told that I can go to college with, uh, by playing football. So I learned the game by watching TV. Wow. And I started to pick it up. So when I was about in the ninth grade, I started to I joined the Optimus Club and just took a liking for the game and, you know. What did your family think of you pursuing football, getting into University of Miami, being a star there? You know what? My brothers, they really loved that. My grandmother, she really enjoyed had a had a wonderful time, you know, knowing that I went to school, went to college, and I was playing on Saturdays, and she, you know, <laughs> and saw me in the newspaper and people talking about Rohan as a hurricane. So it was great. My family loved it. They would come and watch a few of my games. It was wonderful. And you played alongside Ray Lewis, Ray Lewis and The Rock, Warren The Rock. Sapp, Tell you know, I played also alongside Jesse Armstead, Michael Barrow, Darren Smith, a lot of great hurricanes. Being a hurricane at Miami, you learn and you develop a camaraderie with your, your teammates, you know, it's, all, it's a brotherhood. So it was wonderful playing with those guys because we're still friends today. Most of the guys I've, I've played with are now in the Hall of Fame. Really, really happy to know that we were in the same league as some of the greats, you know? What do you think that your father would have thought of football? Because you know, Jamaica is soccer country. You yeah. think he would have liked it? <laughs> I was a ruffian, you know? Mm -hmm. I was like really rugged. So that's why I got the name Ruga, actually. My brother's nicknamed me Ruga. Ruga. So my father would say, yeah, man, that's Ruan, you know? <laughs> he would say, yeah, man, that's, yeah, Ruan liked that. He would like that? Yeah, he'd love that, actually. Yeah. And then after college, you, you're an entrepreneur. You went and you got the farm. Now you're selling coffee. You've got all these businesses, clothing. What yeah. made you want to go out and what gave you the drive? Because you could be complacent. It's a very successful family, and what True. made you have the drive to do all well, that? Well, you know, as our family, you know, as we are, we are into the merchandise business, and, you know, in life you get opportunities, and some things that really resonate with who you are as a human being and the things that you want to, how you want to contribute to life in general, you know, these opportunities, they came about, and my family, you know, everyone's in, involved in music, so I had to kind of um, handle the business side of things, even though, my family is all also involved in the business. I'm more focused on building from that perspective. And it's, it's my music, you know? What we love most is that we're able to take that same passion and that same energy and just translate that into drive and business drive and focus on doing better, you know? What is one of the most fondest memories that you have of your father? Eating with your father, you know, the type of food that our father feeds us. and. Things that he, he's about, he's about fitness, you know, he wants his children to be fit. And, you know, I, I remember going to the beach and running with my father. So we, we want them to, to be fit and strong and know, and know that endurance is key. What's the most important thing you learned from your dad? He told me that um, if I continue to give any more trouble, I'm not his son. Mm. And what he was saying to me is that um, if you're a child of the Almighty, you know, if you're going to be a child of righteousness, you have to, you have to do things good which is what I try to instill in my son, that things, things in life, you know, you have to really represent the goodness. And that's the type of the message my father gave me. It wasn't really that I wasn't his son, but he was saying there's principles about being good. So you have to act this way, and you have, you have I as your father that's teaching you, <laughs> you know, so accept this teaching. You know, I mean, you could have had a father that didn't teach you or didn't care, but you have a father that cares about you, cares about your manhood and what you're going to grow to become. So you have to accept that. And it's your father, because who, el who else is better to tell you than your father? That's true. Nico's mom, she really raised him very well, and he's a good boy. I mean, I see he's got a strong head sometimes, you know, he's a little... It's, it's hard <laughs> a little to, stubborn? It's a little stubborn because yeah. he, he thinks he's older than me in certain <laughs> things. So sometimes like I, what? Give us an example. I mean, if I'm telling him something about a play, he's telling me to relax, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Down. So maybe, I don't know, maybe, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's why, I, but he listens though, and, and he, he, he improves, so sometimes if I can't talk to him, I have to have one of my friends that's in the NFL talk to him, oh, gotcha. I guess 
my status, you know. <laughs> That's a good strategy. I do sometimes. You're a linebacker, he's a linebacker, and you just said before I came in here, you were watching film from the game on Friday, which you guys won. And is it hard to have someone else coaching him when, and you also want to give your input? You know, out of respect for the coaches and their abilities and their scheme and things that how, you know, it's, it, it was at first, but I have to mean watching and want to say something. But also, you have to know that the coaches know your children better than you do because they're with them every day on the field. So they know their tendencies. And, and, and the coaches know how to advance, advance, advance their abilities. But me being his father now, I was like, want everything to be perfect. But you know, it, there's a stage. And I have to accept that too because I can't expect him to be at, at this level when he's at this level. But he's much better than I am at where he is today because not only does he have his father, he has great coaches. He has some of my friends that can yes. really help him to advance his abilities. So, so it's that, that's he's got important. He's a great support system. He has a beautiful support system. His mother, you know, his mother's husband helps him as well. So yeah. he's a, he has a great, great system. Nico, what's it like having Brian as your father, linebacker, entrepreneur, amazing dad? Well, tell me about that. He could teach me about anything. Like you said, he was a football player and yeah. entrepreneur. So if I, if I want to continue with football. He could teach me how to be the best linebacker. Or say I want to go on a different path in business, he could teach me the road to, to doing that. Speaking of that, do you have any dreams and passions outside of football that you want to pursue after your football career? I haven't really looked into that yet. So yeah. I'm focused on football right now. Right now, one day at a time, right? Yes, man. Football and education, you know? Yes. That's, what it, that's what's in his, uh, on his plate. Having to be a, a good student, which he is a good student and also yes. scholastics is important as well as being an athlete because that's what he's doing. So whatever he's doing, he has to excel. And, and how you excel is by really working at it, studying like he likes to study and also practice hard, work hard, work harder than anyone. I read an article in 93 and you said, I give 120%, I don't give 100%. Do you have people giving 100%? So why do that? <laughs> Right? If you're giving 100, I got to give 120. That's average that's a, then, isn't it? 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, you're supposed to give 100%. But it's the ones, the exceptional ones, they give you more than 100%. The ones that want to become great at what, what it is that they're doing. Whether it's a chef, whether it's a, a doctor, he's going to put that extra hour in because, you know, the other doctor is doing the same thing you're doing. If, it, if he's to stop at 100, everyone's going to stop at 100. But, you know, we, we want to keep it going so we, we can become an example. The 150 is an example to the 100. I follow you on Twitter. You're so talented, great on the field, but you're also great off the field. I read your tweets. You say lovely things about respecting women. Uh, there's no curse words. It's always positivity. So, and, and you're sitting here saying that you guys give 120%. Where does such this positive attitude come from? Well, I get it from my father. I follow him on Twitter also. <laughs> He's tweeting positive stuff, so yeah. I think that's the way you gotta go. I have to also teach him that, you know, it's about being positive. Whatever you give is what you're going to get. You should be of a positive influence, you know. You don't have to, to say you don't have to say things to be cool. Say things that's gonna make you a better human being. Wow. Say things that's gonna teach your peers to be better and be a leader. Don't be a follower, be a leader. Tell me, what are your favorite songs from your Grandfather. Favorite song is Redemption Song. Why? <laughs> Why are you laughing? It's real soon. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing, Dad? No, I, Come on. No, I, go ahead. Nico. Go ahead, Nico. Real, I like it because like it calms me down because I'm always upbeat. So like after practice or something, I listen to that kind of get me ready for the rest of the day. Wow. As a father, I always wonder how my son uh, will speak when he has this, it's his personality, and yeah. like in this situation. And you just love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's fun to watch. He's a, he's a, I like it, I like yeah. it, he's good. He's a he's, great kid. What yeah. about you, favorite song? Yeah, yeah my, I don't really have a favorite song of my father. My, uh, I would say, you know, I love all my fathers and brothers in music. I love, I just love music in general. But, I, but for me, uh, music is that moment, you know, different times yes. I listen to different songs and because I'm kind of a, I, I travel a lot, you know? Yes, yes. Working on the behalf of my family, my children, and right. just humanity in general to do things that can make another one's life better. So that's kind of, kind of my work, you know, my duty. Music is what drives us. Like, um, like Nika tell you, you know, after, like, after the game, 
he needs to hear a redemption song yes. because it soothes him. Before the game, we need to hear jamming or yes. Exodus or Buffalo Soldier. Get up, stand up. Get up, stand up. Like these things just to remind us of the journey. Just remind us of, you know, meaning, just to remind us that we're, we have to conquer. So talk to us about Tulane. Well, uh, coaching staff really got me, and when yeah. I took my visit over there, I went with my dad, and I really liked the campus and also the coaches, you know, they're real persistent. And, like, it was real nice meeting them over there. What about the city? The city, I like the city a lot, too. It was real nice, you know, it's different from that, oh, down over here. Nico is a very strong individual. Yeah. As far as his, his heart in general, he's a, so he can handle any situation. You put Nico in Tulane, he's going to excel in Tulane. Wherever he goes, he's going to excel because he's Got devoted to what he's doing. He's committed to his, his decisions. Who well, can throw that ball better? Well, of course I do. <laughs> okay. I will say, I was watching but you guys thinks, throwing the football. But he he's did hurt my little, finger. <laughs> a little bit better. Nico, what are you better at than your dad? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm, just, I'm teasing him. Let me tell you, yeah. Nico is way better than I am at this level. When yeah. I was in high school, I was never as good as Nico. Really? No way, because I, when I watched Nico, Nico is, is actually playing the way I played in college. All I can do is like give him a little bit of pointers because yeah. he's, he has great coaching. He has a great coaching staff. Coach, yeah. Coach Guandolo. Coach G's awesome. Co yeah. yeah, I mean, he's... Great you're, guy. You're, your linebacker coach, your entire, your entire coaching staff, they're wonderful yeah. people and they're very nice to us. They're nice to I as his father yeah. because, you know, they're, when they see me, they say hello to me and speak to me and, and tell me how good Nico's, at, Nico's doing. So I don't, I, I, I was really being funny when I said I'm better. Yeah, I'm yeah. really not. At this juncture in his life, he's way ahead of me, you know what I mean? Yeah. As far as the knowledge of the game. Mm -hmm. In everything you do, nothing's given, you know? Mm -hmm. So he has to also be qualified to to whether it's a family business, where it's playing on the field, where it's being the leader of his team. You're not just gonna hand it no, to him. No, nothing is handed. You gotta work for it. Yeah, you have to earn it. Just like he's earning his own way through football, you know, being a good boy in school, having the proper grades, he's earned it himself. Nico, what about you? I asked your dad. Yeah, what have you Nico. learned from him? Everything. What right. stands out to you? What's that one piece of advice that really stands out to you? 120%, like you said. Yeah. He always tells me to go all out every place. That's what really, that's what I try to do every play. Yeah, it's so amazing. What about from your grandfather? Grandfather, he taught me, you know, how to play with heart. Like he didn't yeah. really teach, but like watching him. Yeah. When even his concerts, you know, it's not really a football and concert. They're different, but seeing him, seeing his him, heart for it, what he does. Exactly, and how like how emotional he is on the on the um, stage and all of that. And he gave it 120%, so that's what I really took from him, too. I gotta tell you, my favorite song is No Woman, No Cry, just for the everything's gonna be all right lyrics, because anytime I feel sick or I'm on a plane and there's turbulence or I'm scared or whatever, I just keep hearing those lyrics over and over my head and then I feel calm. Yeah. So yours is a redemption song, mine's that. No Woman, No Cry, it's I true. love it. And it's not the No Woman, No Cry part, it's no, the no, no, everything's no. gonna be all right. Absolutely. You know? Every word counts. Well, yeah. Nico didn't talk too much. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure how much you know about Nico, but I'm sure by watching him on the field, you can yes. get to understand his passion for the game. What does one love mean to you? One love, it just means, you know, it's one love. Like, everybody, show love to everything you do and, you know, put your heart in everything. One love is about oneness that we're all brothers and sisters, you know, we're all here together, we're all in the same boat. And it's about doing things that's gonna help your brother, man, or your sister to make her life better, or his life better, so. We don't wanna walk like this, you know, where we're clashing. We should walk side by side, and we carry each other. So that's really one love to us. One love is oneness. Yes. You taught us a lot today. <laughs> you know, I'm learning from you too. Oh, please, we're leaving here better people. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you for having us. <laughs>